everyone. I hope you're all doing really well today. So uh, I am filming now the last of the IMATS haul videos that I am going to be filming for this year's IMATS LA for you guys. I have a whole bunch of brushes and other products, random things that I picked up that I have to show you. So I'm going to kind of try to talk fast so you guys don't have to sit here for a million years. So uh, I wanted to tell you first about uh, Model in a Bottle. So I have not tried any of these products, but I did pick them up and it was a fantastic deal. Um, so Model in a Bottle, basically I picked up their Sensitive Skin Formula Makeup Setting Spray and it says it has a matte finish. It's a full size of that. A full size of the Model in a Bottle Super Gentle Eye Makeup Remover, non-oily and also their long-lasting eyebrow sealer which is something you put over your brows and it like they won't move supposedly uh, again I haven't tried it but let me show it to you there's like a little brush here and then there's this thing so I haven't even read about how you're supposed to use this or anything but um, I will be coming back and letting you guys know about all of these products once I've had a chance to use them. I also picked up their lipstick sealer, which is supposedly one of the products that they're really known for, like supermodels, uh, models who are doing, you know, modeling, <laughs> supposedly use a lot of this stuff. And also they threw in a little travel eyelash curler and a little, it's like two little brushes, which these are, I mean, they're kind of crappy brushes. They're not that nice in my opinion, but you know, they threw them in there. So I got all of that stuff and I think it was all $25. I thought that was a really good deal. So I couldn't really pass that up. And so I'm excited to try all of their offerings and let you guys know what I think about them once I've had a chance to do that. Um, also, I picked up something else that I had been looking at on Beautylish for the longest time and I just never picked it up, but I got this also, I believe it was like $25 as a show special, and it's the stuff from Perry and Spirit. So this is basically a brush cleaner that is all natural. They use, it's cit citrus spirits is what they use, I believe. And so you use, they give you this little um, jar, it's a glass jar, it's really nice, and in it they've got like... There's like this little, um, little, uh, what do you call this, meshy grid thing, and then it sits with this, and you fill it up with a little bit of the brush cleaner, and then you just kind of run your brush across that little grid thing, and it cleans it really, really quickly. She did a demonstration there, and it not only that, but it actually dries really quickly, so your brushes, um, they end up drying really quickly. So I got the glass jar, a little spritzing one that you can spray on your, directly on your brushes so it's kind of easy to use. And then I got the big bottle which is 16 ounces along with two of the brush cleaner wipes to try out. So I got all that stuff for $25 and I'm really excited about it. And then the next thing that I picked up is from a company I had previously never heard of before but since then I've seen it several times which is the oddest phenomenon, isn't it? Does that happen to you guys? It seems like I always hear about something, a company or um, some sort of a concept or whatever and then after that I hear about it like several times right after that where I know I never heard about it before. Um, but anyway, this company is called Besame Cosmetics and what they're about is making cosmetics that are basically vintage colors, uh, mostly lipsticks and rouges is what they do a lot. The lady who owns the company and started it, I talked to her there and she said that a lot of the people doing vintage uh, makeup on period uh, films use their products and they have a cute little store in Burbank, I think. And so what I picked up from them was a, she said it was like a replica or a reproduction of a 1930s I think she said it was a Max Factor brush actually and it, it looks like this and it's really pretty and unique over here I had to pick this up just because I'm a brush junkie I just had to have this thing she, it was fifty dollars which seems like an awful lot but I was just like it, how unique is that she said they'd only made like fifty of them and they were probably going to be making more because it'd been a really popular item but this they made with synthetic bristles and it's just heavenly soft synthetic bristles and she said that what it was originally used for though they used to make these out of boar's hair and it's like really ergonomic you can hold it like this and the ladies would like puff on their powder and then they would take the boar's hair bristles which I can't imagine them doing that because boar's hair bristles are really really hard <laughs> um, and they would like buff out the powder on their face so this I can just use like to buff powder or whatever um, maybe finishing powder it's just so soft but I thought that was really, really cool, so I picked that up. So I wanted to tell you guys first about all the stuff that I got at Delium Tools. So I picked up several of their brushes because last year at IMATS I got two of their brushes. And at IMATS their brushes are a lot cheaper than they are online. So I had really enjoyed the ones that I got last year and I wanted to try more of their things. Uh, the first one that I got is 
a face brush. It says it's a contour brush, but you could use it for blush as well. It was $7 at IMATS, and it's called the 945 brush. So all the ones I got were the Green Bamboo series, so they're all synthetic. They're all really soft. Um, for synthetic brushes, I would say that these are even softer than any of the other synthetic brushes that I own, probably. Uh, they're just super, super soft. Um, I find them really good for cream product that's really on the thin side. Uh, if it's a really thick product, they have a hard time, I think, blending it out, at least for me. Uh, I find that it, it has a hard time blending it out because the product is so thick and these are so soft. So I picked up that one. I also got one for $6. This is called the Face Blending Brush 940. And it looks very similar to the one I just showed you, but it's flat. It's about the same size as the one I just showed you as well. Um, against my face, that's what it looks like. And I was going to try to use that for contouring because it was so flat and skinny. I thought it would be a really good size. And then I got another one, which I tried to use for concealer uh, a little bit, so it's kind of dirty when I show it to you. But it's supposed to be a, an eye crease brush, and it's the 781 brush, and it was $5.00. And it's a pretty decent little brush. That's what it looks like. It's pretty small for a crease brush on the smallish side and also pointy right on the end. I don't know if you can tell. Here, let me put that as a background. And then I got, for $5 as well, I got a little concealer brush. I'm not even going to take it out of the package. It's nothing too special. Just looks like a little, a smallish size con um, concealer brush. And it is the 936 brush. And then I got two face brushes that I was going to try to use for thinner and liquid foundations and other cream products like that. Um, this one actually feels pretty stiff. It's the 992, and I paid $11 for it. I thought that was so cheap. Um, it's a lot stiffer, actually, than a lot of them usually are, so I was going to try it for blending out uh, liquid foundation. I thought it might do a good job of that. And then... The next one, the last one that I got is the 959 brush that I paid $10 for. And I wanted that for the same purpose because it also feels a little more stiff. But I would say the one I just showed you was more stiff than this one. Um, and that's kind of what it looks like. So I'm going to try to use both of those uh, with foundation. And I picked up a few brushes that were really different than anything else that I had. And I just kind of was so curious about them that that was the reason why I picked them up more than anything. And so one of these brushes is a huge hit with me and that is the B5549 BKSL brush. So this is an eyebrow brush and you would use this with eye eyebrow powder and what's so unique about this is it's about twice as wide this way as a normal eyebrow brush would be. So I don't know if you'll be able to see this if I hold it up to my eyebrow but it's really, really cool. Um, what I love about it is it's a lot easier, I find, to make a straight line because it's so much longer. You can do your eyebrows a lot more quickly. I really love the hair that's used. It's still really thin even though it's long. And I just, this is quickly becoming my new favorite tool as far as eyebrows are concerned. I just really love this brush and I would recommend this to anybody. Anybody? I really like this brush. It was super cool. I don't have the price on here for you, but you can look it up on their website pretty easily. Now, I got another one. I'll show you the one I just showed you, which is normally twice as wide as a normal one. This other one is the G535 brush, and it's also an eyebrow brush, and I got this one just almost on a lark just to see what on earth it was going to do because it's so different than anything else. So this is also an eyebrow brush. This is the one I just showed you that's still really wide. This is the other one. Look at how wide it is. Isn't that crazy? It's so wide. Now, I got this because I was really intrigued, like I said, and that's my eyebrow. So it's, I mean, it's, it's, it doesn't take much to do a whole entire brow. So I don't know that this is quite as workable as this one, um, but I'm interested to tr continue trying it, and I will find out. Then I picked up the G5512 BKSL brush, and it is the, the it is literally the tiniest little nub of hair. I am really interested. I haven't had a chance to try it yet, but I really want to try this. It's even smaller than the little tiny Goss one that he made, which, by the way, they have a version just like that, um, which I didn't get because I already had Gosses. But I really want to try that for some little detail work. And then I got the tiniest, teeny tiniest little pencil brush I've ever seen in my life. It is the G5515 BKSL, and I believe this is made of goat hair, and it's a little tiny point. I mean, it is so tiny. 
I don't know if you guys can tell how tiny it is, but it is super duper tiny. And then I picked up another brush that is similar. This one is called the G5522 BKSL. It's very similar to the larger eyeshadow gloss brush that he has, but this one, it seems like the taper is a little bit more, uh, it seems a little bit more tapered than the one that he has, but I've been using the one that he has an awful lot for an, a wash of color in my crease of like a lighter blending shade. Uh, and so I wanted to pick up another one because I, I can easily use two before I get to washing my brushes. So I got that one. And then I got, I thought this was so cute. I didn't need it, but I loved it. It's the G511. It is a tiny, uh, it's a tiny angled contour brush. And it is super soft because it's made of blue squirrel hair. And it's so tiny. It's really small as far as these go. But I thought it would be really lovely for highlight or for contour. And it's just, ugh, these blue squirrel hair ones that are exclusively just blue squirrel hair and not mixed with goat, they are just like so soft and so beautiful. Like I just want to pet it all day long. So got that. And then I got uh, the G5537 BKSL brush which is very unique, not one that I have anything like. It's super long this way, uh, but pretty skinny. So, and it almost looks, just to make it so airy and fluffy, almost like they are. there are two layers of the hairs. I don't know if you can tell when I spread it. I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not, but um, it is just like like the fluffiest, lightest, like airiest little thing, almost like a fan brush, but in round form and not stiff. And so I just thought it would be really cool for like a, a flick of highlight or maybe like for bronzer lightly or whatever. Um, so I wanted to try it out and I picked that up. And then probably another one of my very favorite ones that I got this year at IMAS is this brush. And it's the K020 brush. And so my very favorite Hakuhoto brush is the S111 brush, which is a blush brush. It's the, the flat paddle type blush brush, and it's made of blue squirrel hair, but that one is super expensive. It's like $100 at least, I want to say, or like 90 something. And um, so I wanted to see if there was a cheaper alternative so I could tell you guys about it, and I knew I'd eventually have to buy another one for me anyway. Uh, so I got one that looks a little longer than the S111 brush. It's a little bit bigger, a little bit longer, but it's also just blue scroll hair and lovely taper. And this is just, oh, I love it as much as the S111 brush, but this one was cheaper. And I can't remember exactly how much it was, but it was a good bit cheaper. It was either 60 something maybe, perhaps, don't quote me on that, but you guys can look it up pretty easily as well. Um, but I love this blush brush. It's just so lovely. Um, there were a couple of other little random things that I picked up. They had one vendor that was selling like some random jewelry and things like that and so I got a couple of cute stackable bracelets they were magnetic I thought they were really cute so they're magnetic little things they're like faux leather and they had a little bow on them and so I got a couple of different colors and I thought they'd be cute to mix and match uh, different colors like two at a time maybe or maybe even more and they were pretty small so they didn't look um, really big on my wrists. I have like these scrawny little wrists so <laughs> I'm always, uh, I don't like a lot of bangles and things that are really thick and chunky because I feel like they just look, they like make my wrists look like a stick or something. But And then I got this really cute little, uh, I was think it was like five dollars maybe, something like that. It's a little ear warmer or I don't know what you call those things but it's like a headband and I thought it was adorable with this little kind of vintagey looking uh, flower on it. And so that is everything I got at IMATS. If you guys watched all of my haul videos, then you are champs because they were long and there were a lot of them. Uh, but I wanted to show you guys everything I got. It was a lot of fabulous, really cool products. So if you went to IMATS too, tell me about it. I'd love to hear about it. And if you have any questions uh, or comments about the products that I got, please leave them below. I love to hear from you guys. And again, you can always reach out to me on Twitter or Instagram. Um, I'm just Beauty Mozart on both of those. I have a Gmail account that's Beauty Mozart, so you can email me there. Uh, beautymozart at gmail.com or you can also private message me on YouTube here. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Bye!